In November of 1904, Tsar Nicholas II of Russia met the acquaintance of a wandering monk from Siberia and almost immediately was captivated by the man's charisma. The Tsar and his wife were fascinated by the way this rural backcountry man of God addressed all people, even those of royal standing, with a seemingly crude yet familiar manner. The royal couple would go on to invite this man of remarkable spiritual fervor to join their court. From humble beginnings, this monk would go on to become arguably the most powerful man in Russia. He was often described as the dark power behind the Russian royalty, a sinister puppet master who had ensnared the royal family with hypnotism and sorcery, drawing them deep into a world of sin and depravity. What is the truth behind the miraculous powers attributed to the man they called the Mad Monk? Was he a man who could not be killed by normal means? Did one of his prophecies actually foretell the end of the Romanov family who had ruled Russia for 300 years? Join the theorists as they explore the legend of Russia's greatest love machine, aka Grigory Rasputin. Theorizing Case File 137, Ra Ra Rasputin. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Woo! Woo! It is one thing I'm thankful for is that this goddamn running challenge is almost over. It's nearly killed me. <laughs> um, it's ruined my knees for life. We've got three days left. My back and knee are so fucked. I haven't run in I don't think five days. I've tried to go for a little run. Can't do it. Just immense pain on my knee. Um, I'm going to try to get... I'm not going to hit 100. My, that goal's out the window. But we can't announce the winner yet, even though we all know everyone who is on the you, challenge, you know, we you knew know. the first day who won. Yeah. Um, He's a, we'll officially two announce separate it in the lists. next case file. There's two separate lists to the challenge. There's yeah, the first there's, place, and then there's yeah. the rest. Yeah. <laughs> It's not even close. <laughs> the suspense for yeah. top three is killing me. Yeah. Oh, it's Being been a battle, last. man. Like honestly, the the like t- two, three, four, five close. have been just running and gunning for each other the whole time. It's been crazy. Um, but we got to come up with a, a mate challenge because it looks like we're going to be most of us are going to still be in some sort of lockdown. Yep. Uh, so something less with less impact on uh, the old knees. Would like, be uh, ideal, even though I basically can claim uh, the number one running theorist. It's a good chance I'm not going to be able to run title. another kilometer for years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll announce that next week, the official winner. But let's uh, shoot us some messages on Instagram and stuff. What should we do for the month of May? Uh, we need we got to do something to keep our minds active and something active. I've been hearing uh, people maybe whispers of a push-up challenge. Push up, like one push-up every day? No, I I I seen that and I thought I thought about it. maybe it would have to be something like this. Like, it's a push-up challenge, as in like at the end of the month you train all month. Training's up to you, but the end of the month, the last day, whoever can do the most push-ups in one go is the. Oh, winner. you got to film yourself to exhaustion on day yeah. on May thirtieth, and you you Let's can't fucking do it. And you can't stop. Like you can do a quick pause for a breath or two, but you can't like put your elbows down. You can't put your knees down. You got to keep going until you collapse. That'd be the only mm-hmm. way you could do a push up because you can like it'd be too hard to keep track if everyone filmed every day. All right, ten today, twelve the next day. You know what I mean? So I don't, that's the, I think if you want to do push up challenge, you'd have to do something like that. See, the only thing is though, this is my only issue with that push with that challenge is that guys like Andrew. They're not gonna fucking lift his. He's not gonna lift his finger for thirty days, and then he's just gonna. <laughs> he's just gonna go for it. What do you mean, lift my finger? I fucking work out seven days a week. <laughs> like, what do you, like, who taught you how no, to work out? No, you don't. Who, Look who at tur- you. Taught you how to lift weights. Seven days a week. 
Hundred percent. Well, here this would be, um, this would be the what, benchmark. What I'm saying is he's not going to do a push up the whole month of May, and then he's just going to run and gun. Right. I guarantee you, I'll the day one, I'll do push ups day one, and I will fucking beat it by at least ten on the end of the month. Okay, this would be the pace then, Andrew. How many push ups if you did them right now? Could you do in a row? I have absolutely no idea. Good question. We should. 30? I'll do it after. Do you do thirty? Huh? 30, 40, 50? Are we talking about fucking one arm here? 30? Like, what? How many could you do? You can do 30 one arm push ups. Are you kidding me? I could probably do 20 one arm push ups with my right. But, well, I, whatever. We can see if we want yeah, to. We'll with his right, I wonder why. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm not Rasputin here. I'm not a ladies' man. All right. right? We'll, a lot of time uh, indoors. We'll, think, we'll, we'll think of something. We'll think, we'll of, think something. of something. Um, big news, though. So let's get into some. Space News! Big news. Big news. Some big old news. The Pentagon declassifying three UFO videos today. Um, The Gimbal and two others. I can't remember their names now. Basically... Also saying in the declassified documents that yeah we don't we don't know what these were these are legit and we don't know um, we knew they were before but they didn't have the government's backing of like yes these were filmed by uh, you know our our ships our planes our people I mean we've had Commander David Favor on talking about the videos but we just haven't had the government step up and be like declassify these yep we don't know what they are this is exactly what you know, people are saying they are is we don't know. And that's exactly what happened today. So kind of a big step forward. I thought for the UFO community to have something like this, the government just be like, yeah, you know what? We don't know what it is. And they're now declassified. Maybe, or maybe it's misinformation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dude, at, this point, <laughs> at this point in 2020 though, how much of a stretch, like we're all so ground down. Like if they were just like, yo, listen, uh, we're going to lock da- down for another 30 days. Uh, this coronavirus is going to take another hit. Like, life isn't going to return to normal for 2020. Also, there's aliens. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> so, See you guys in it. 2021. <laughs> guess, guess what? Sit at home and think about it. All right? That's all we can Peace. tell you. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised China's not trying to deflect blame to the aliens. Like, well, you know, it wasn't us. It could have been aliens, though. Could have been an alien dropped virus. Exactly. Maybe it's their plan just to fucking get us off the planet. Uh, what else do we have for space news? That's the big one, but let's. Uh, what else do we have? We have the first ever credible evidence of someone killed by a falling meteorite. I guess it was like August 22nd, 19, 1888, I guess, is from State Archives of Turkey. A falling me- meteorite hit and killed one man and paralyzed another and is what now... Shit, Suleymaniye, Iraq. Did um, now, I kind of looked at that, I, and here was my question: Was the impact like nearby, so it like blast, like blasted two people, a paralyzing one, or did this meteor hit, like direct shot some guy? Would it not have just smushed him? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, or did it like hit cl- nearby, and the 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 impact blast killed them? Killed one and paralyzed the other. Well, they're saying that on August 10th of the Julian calendar and August 6th, August 22nd of the Gregorian calendar, uh, there were letters that reported that at 8.30 p.m. at that local time, there is a report of a large fireball in the sky. So after they, the fireball was sighted, they said after that, there was meteor, meteorites fell like rain from the sky for about 10 minutes on Ooh, top of this shit. small village. Uh, which just resulted in the death of at least the one man who uh, they didn't get his name, so they don't have his name. It's not in the archives. It's it's just they don't have it. And then the para the paralyzing of the other. Uh, you know, in addition to that, there is a damage to the crops, uh, which was reported, uh, which is pretty much normal, I guess, for uh, or it's you know par for the course for fireball shockwaves. Now, now does those meteorites hit the ground or did they air burst? That's what we don't know, I guess. Well, they exploded well, in the air and then 
Well, one hit the ground. Well, we do have a, a resident fireball expert in Zolarius, so maybe you can answer those questions <laughs> for us. Well, I'd have to examine how many uh, how many of his fellow party was affected by said firebolt. <laughs> and... They didn't have shape spell on it. What the now, fuck is it? <laughs> he, he, see, here's my question. It's like, I know we've talked about it before, but Zell ate a piece of a meteor that came down. And I remember going to that the meteor scene, and it had put a hole through the roof, the floor, the floor joists, and put a like a little, you know, it wasn't big, but it, there was definitely an impact crater. And if someone would have been standing right there and like took that in the back, and vaporized, blow, yeah, just poof, like would have blown you apart. Like so, I'm when I'm when they're like, yeah, we can tell this guy got killed by a meter. I'm like. Did he get hit? Like, was that a direct shot? <laughs> Did you know that that, that fucking meteor. piece of the meteor that Zelly tasted was actually from an ancient vampire planet? And that's where Zelly got his ancient vampire powers from? That's well, that that's one version of that the story. Out. Yeah. We, you know, I've I've always said it's frozen shit from an airplane passing overhead. But Dude, let me tell you, potato. if that frozen shit could do that to a house... Buddy, hey, peanuts can move, baby. Dude, it blew through the roof. So you got five eighths plywood on the roof, through the floor, so three quarter plywood, through and hit a floor joist. Not didn't just go through the plywood, hit a joist. So it's like well, like eleven and seven eight joist, like a pretty pretty thick joist, right through it, like an I beam, into the concrete and cratered the concrete. I don't know now if did uh, you did you lick it or did you actually consume some of oh, it? Oh, he no, there's there's it was like a powdered mess. What, what I probably ate. When I think about it, is probably just pieces of concrete, more or less. But either way, there was, there was a little some, piece. There had of to be some something alien. left in there. Yeah. What else we got for space news? Celebrating thirty years of the Hubble Space Telescope. Woo woo. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, yeah, the Hubble Telescope taking wicked pictures. Um, I can't believe it's been up there for thirty years. It's it blows my mind. The pictures it takes and comes up with with thirty year technology, and it just gets me ever so excited for the James C. Webb telescope to get going. I know because right? that one's like, supposed to be like what three times the power or something. Yeah, and it's gonna be it, to me. It's like it's got to be the difference of like you know watching an old TV and then getting a brand new TV, four K TV, and you're like, oh, oh my god, wow! Um, like that's it's got it, it's gonna be incredible. I know yeah, it's pushed back to like twenty twenty two, but Let's just hope that they don't have the same issues that they had with the Hubble when they first launched it, and they yeah. had to go fix it like right off the bat. It had like a rippled lens, right? And they were they thought yeah, it, it was they thought it was up. all wrought to... off, like written off, and they had to like send. What was it ninety three? I think was when they eventually fixed it. Right. I just uh, yeah, on the shuttle Endeavor, they had to send it up there, which they thought was going to be uh, a routine maintenance mission, but it was the <laughs> they had urgent <laughs> urgency to it. This shit's and they broke. Had to go fix it. This shit's broke. I mean, people people compare that to one of uh, like the second greatest feat of human spaceflight, next to landing on the moon. Is fixing it's that fixing thing in Hubble? space? Is fixing that Hubble Hubble telescope in space? Which yeah. I also didn't know that the Hubble telescope also is uh, a spectrograph as well. I didn't know that. Meaning, records the Meaning multiple frequencies. It's able to identify light waves. Like incoming light waves, so you can basically use it to uh, determine what is in the atmosphere of certain exoplanets or stars, like the the atmospheric composition. Okay, it's pretty neat. That is neat. Yeah, mm, it's we, been doing that for thirty years. Pretty cool. Cheers to the Hubble. Cheers to the Hubble. To however many more years until we replace you with a better telescope. Yeah, <laughs> <Don't> maybe <they> <laughs> let you drop out of the atmosphere and burn up. Hubble yeah. will always be number one telescope in my heart. Um, and the last one, NASA has recorded the sounds of the solar system. Um, it's cool. They designed a special instrument that could record electromagnetic vibrations and transferred them into sounds that our ears could hear. Uh, so you can actually hear the sounds of space um, and the various planets. They have them up. They have a Spotify SoundCloud playlist. Unfortunately, we can't play it because NASA has copyrighted down, space. They, they got yeah, space under space. wraps. <laughs> they have copyrighted space noise. Venus. Venus sounds very nice. I like Venus. The sun sounds pretty welcoming. Mercury sounds terrible. Absolutely terrible. 
Um, Mars doesn't sound too bad. It's like inter- interesting stuff, though. If you haven't, you can type in, uh, you know, Nassie, Nass, Nassie, 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 old Nassie, little Nassie. That's its uh, track name on Spotify. No, NASA Solar System Sounds, and check it out for yourself. They're pretty cool. Uh, we'll play some on After Hours, so if you're not already on our Patreon, get on it. Get on to our After Hours, and we'll show it to you there. Now, for the task at hand. Oh, I wish I could play this song, too. Rasputin. The man, man who cannot be killed. The myth. The legend himself. So what is his deal? So what we know about Rasputin, so Rasputin was a certain man that lived in Russia long ago. Um, he was big and strong. His eyes were flaming glow. Yeah, I, you know, so far. most people looked at him with terror and with fear. But, Braden, remember that Moscow chicks, he was uh, such a lovely deer. Well, that's because he could preach the Bible like a preacher, some would say. Yeah, well, and I heard that his teachings were full of ecstasy and fire. Well, he was also uh, the kind of teacher women would desire that we're, we're going to find out. Ra ra Rasputin. Ra, Rasputin, lover <laughs> of the Russian queen. queen. There, there was, was a cat, cat who really, really was gone. gone. Ra ra, ra, ra Rasputin, Rasputin, Russia's greatest, Russia's greatest love, love machine. machine. It was a shame how he carried on. Hard to sing with you over Skype. That's, this That's right. The rest of this he episode ruled the will Russian be land ATT, and acapella, never mind the song. <laughs> um, it's it's crazy after looking into Rasputin how accurate this song is. <laughs> this song. I told you guys. I was like, if you listen to this song, you are pretty much a Rasputin expert. <laughs> like, you so to that one song. You hats didn't off lie. to Boney M. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. And fucking that's it for nailed the it. Case file. Nailed it. Hope and you enjoyed it. Thanks for banger. coming. That song is fucking great. <laughs> Oh, it's it such is. a banger. When that bass comes in, the bass comes starts coming in. There's an, yeah, it's fucking I, for the preview, when I make the preview for this one, I'm gonna use me and Andrew actually dance to this song for like case file for Diatslav Pass. Oh so dude. We dance oh, man, at old. the original at the OG studio. I'm sure it's somewhere on Facebook or something. I'm gonna find it. Uh, but I'm we, gonna find it. We dance to this. Uh, song Blitz out of our minds on Octavia Vodka. Dude, that was yeah. the song. That was so long ago. I bet you we yeah, still have it. So we gotta still have it somewhere. I'm um, pretty sure that was the one, but I'll find it. Um, what's up with Rasputin? Why are we, why are we talking about him today? For well, Rasputin does have a little bit in common with Diat Love Pass, uh, being that both of them pretty much take place in around Siberia, around the Urals Mountain, because he was born in that area in a small Siberian village. Uh, in 1869 so he was born to a peasant family uh, he was actually believed to be uh, they had seven children all of which died oh he was the only one who survived and they're saying that there is there is perhaps another one too i think he had a smaller he had a younger sister as well um so what's interesting about rasputin is that he is he he's he's a character who has pretty much like cemented himself within uh kind of like popular culture. He's a he's a, he's a he, mystery kind of a history. Like yeah. he's, he's a, a historic he's a, figure. Yeah. And and but the thing is, we don't know anything about pretty much from his youth to his early adulthood. It's pretty much blank. I have no eye clue. Um w- one of the few things that we kind of know about his his growing up is is reports that come from actually his daughter, uh, who wrote in her diary or uh, in one of the biographies that they there appeared to have been portents when he was born. There was uh, there was talk about fireballs in the sky, six like a dogs being born, uh, an abnormal amount of deformed children being born around the same time as when he was. So there is this kind of... Yeah, there was a meteor in the sky the night of his birth or something fucking yeah. crazy like that. So, so there, there is definitely... Prophesized. You have a lot of trouble sorting out what is true and what is myth. The one wow. story that I remember hearing, though, of his childhood was that he lost his older brother at a really young age. They were playing in a pond, and his brother, I guess, 
you know what I mean, fell in and almost drowned, ended up saving him. And then he later died of pneumonia from the water. And from what I understand, like he took that extremely hard. And that's what kind of, you know, made him delve into like the religious side of the occult. Right. And um, we do know that Rasputin was not formally educated, that he pretty much was reported to have been illiterate until his early adulthood when he really started getting into uh into taking into the conspiracy having side. sex with people in exchange for tutoring well did <laughs> maybe you, not like, yet <laughs> did you so when he first took off do you did you guys read anything about that cult that he joined that the religious well Christian even cult? even before are you talking that about the clasties or the yeah the clasties yeah. yeah. oh those guys are wild man <laughs> yeah tell us all about them major well, from what I understand, when these guys it's get some together, some Siberian bush cult. <laughs> yeah, so the guys get it get together and and like Braden said, a Siberian bush somewhere. And first, what they do is they drink their faces off, Perfect. and then they sing, cool, and then they pray, all right, and then they spin around in circles until mm-hmm. they collapse on the ground, cool, mm-hmm. and then they bang it out, mm-hmm. and <laughs> huge orgy, giant and it was, Christian it was, orgy. It was. Wait, uh, is it all dudes? I think there was. No, some, no. I, I think there was. There. Is there a mix? I think there was some. Ch- Apparently, like Dan, it was like. Come on. It was pretty. Wait, like it was a pretty I, wild time, and like <laughs> that a lot doesn't of. Mean anything. <laughs> like from what I read, a lot of like a lot of the villagers and like pilgrims like wanted to be a part or find out where it was because I'm guessing there wasn't a lot to do in Siberia. So when you hear stories about you know this crazy spinning sex cult, you were like, yeah, hmm. that sounds crazy. Where do they Where do they meet? <laughs> Where and when? Uh, just curious. Uh, where, when? Asking what for a you, it, Was there a certain religious significance to the spinning, or was that just well, part of the? So I guess their whole their whole idea was the fact that like so they were Christian and they wanted to get all the like they they essentially they wanted to sin to the max, and that's how you would repent for your sins is by right, taking right, it to right, an extreme. Right. Yeah, it was like that's where you would find salvation through sinning, and right. everybody well, knows ultimate sin. Jesus hates. When you spin around until you fucking fall, I've heard Man. that. Yeah. Doesn't like it. Heard that, before. and especially when you fall into a sin right after from spinning. Oh, that's the worst. S- so you would Sealed call these fate. spinning and sp- spinning and sinning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sin and spin. The sin, sin and spin. spin. <laughs> this this is the kind of spin class I could get class. into. <laughs> Sounds kind of fun. Um, but yeah, there was. But even before that, like some of the stuff I read is that like when he was a kid, he would tell people that he could like he could uh, see the future and had prophecies and even helped catch a, like a cow thief or some shit. Right. I um, think a horse thief, I believe horse and his, thief, yeah. um, his father and his parents, I believe like they, they seem to have some sort of awareness or they, they claim that they had witnessed him exhibit like healing powers. Yeah. Uh, and animals, animals. And, talk, and talk to them. And like, he was had a real connection with, with, he was know, actually, animals. Yeah, well, he was actually the original Doctor Doolittle, just ver- Russian. <laughs> <laughs> original, yeah, this, original Tiger King. Th- yeah, that's where <laughs> this whole story comes from. Actually, it's just a Russian version of Doctor Doolittle. Uh, yeah, so he left. Like he had a wife and he had a kid, and this is kind of when he really, like, I guess, comes on the map. Is like he decides he's like, listen, I've had enough of this. I want to be a monk. I've had his wife. He's like, listen, we, you know, we've all been there, right? You know, who hasn't been in a relationship where you're like, you know what? Listen, I think being a monk sounds like the, <laughs> the proper path to take here. Um, I've made a mistake in my life. I'm going to throw everything away to devote myself to uh, be a monk. And that's what this guy did. That's what Rasputin did. So he right. So either he made the conscious decision, or it was also it's also reported that he had a vision. Of While course. he was out plowing his field, there was a vision of what he said. He said that he saw the Virgin Mary. Mm, yeah, that's come right. To speak with him and point towards the horizon, and he took that to mean, you know, go forth, wander. spin around in circles, and have orgies. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> see, that wasn't. That, it's kind of weird how that goes because he he goes and he tries to be a monk and he very quickly is like, listen, what do you mean? You like, like you got no sex celibate? Like I'm Rasputin and Rasputin fucks. So I'm out of here, you fucking nerds. 
I am, I'm sure that's how it went, word for word. <laughs> Probably. And I, you know what? By the sounds of it, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't helicoptering his dick the whole time. <laughs> well, and something's got to be spinning. It's part of the fucking religion. <laughs> so, he quits the monastery. He's like, fuck this. I'm out of here. And he walks back. He's walking back to his village. And that's where he, you know, th- runs into the sex cult and joins the sex cult. Well, you know why, though? Because all I can picture him is just wandering down a fucking dirt path, swinging his dick. And these other police <laughs> yeah. guys are like, hey, that's our kind of guy. Yeah. Hey, 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 you. Old big dick over there. <laughs> 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 Want to join a a secret sex cult in the woods? It's like, well, do I? Now, what's the significance of him turning into a vegetarian upon return? Why is that part of the story? Because he did. He well, you know, he was claimed to have sworn off meat and alcohol. And one other thing, um, you well, know, one didn't last long. Well, like, listen, <laughs> if you can talk to animals, you're not going to want to eat them. Let's be honest. I guess so. It's a good point. Well, so it- he comes back from his failed monkhood. He's now dabbled in the sex occultism, uh, and he's back. What is he doing now? So now he goes off and he takes off and he does a little bit more of wandering. Uh, he becomes kind of uh, what they call a stranic, which is a, a holy wanderer or a pilgrim. And so he kind of walked pretty much all the way back. There said there were reports of uh, people think that he had wandered like all the way to uh, as far as Greece uh, and then gone all the way back. Um, and it's pretty much what he did. And he, he gathered a small uh, group of followers of acolytes by the early 1900s. I mean, the real hero of this story is this fucking guy's wife. <laughs> like, totally fine with him. Just walking around, swinging his dick and spinning. <laughs> Right. She was, I mean, you could say she was unusually devoted to him uh, through everything. I feel like that's going to be a common theme throughout this podcast. Like he put a spell on her? Perhaps. Oh, 100%. (laughs) Uh, Rasputin was said to be unusually charismatic. Uh, You know, there, there are multiple... Big dick energy, I think, is what they say. That's the modern term, I think. That is 100% accurate. (laughs) It's in the historical records. (laughs) Big dick energy. Origin of big dick energy. Yeah. So by 1905, uh, Rasputin kind of entered into the Russian aristocracy social circles uh he had made his way to saint petersburg uh tales and and rumors of his uh his you know his healing powers mostly i'm not sure about how far that how uh if the sex cult stuff had come out yet uh probably because you don't go to saint petersburg without probably knowing about that stuff uh but he was brought in and kind of introduced among the royal family by uh it, it's Melitza and Anastasia of Montenegro who were both uh married to the Tsar cousins at the time and then uh Tsar Nicholas II was the uh was the current monarch of Russia during this time and if you look up great mustaches Tsar Nicholas II oh. is on that list. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, first first team all-star. For, first team all-star for mus- mustaches. Right. Him and Dave Babbage. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Babbage. I'm going to get a picture. Yeah. I got to get a picture of both of those guys now because they're both equally <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, I bet so, you Dave Babbage would kick his ass. Here he is. It's a pretty badass... Good look at that beard. That's, that's, that's a, a fucking good. good that's yeah. good. Good looking dude. Now pull up Dave Babbage. No Dave, Dave Babbage. Babbage. I'll tell you that much. Okay, Dave. And then let's throw let's throw an honorable mention out to Hal Johnson too. He's he 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 probably get. On, I don't know if he's making the list, but he's getting honorable mention. Wow, well, he's, he's he's keeping fit and having fun. I'll tell you that much. Can't, can't find a big enough picture of fucking Dave Babbage. What really? It's a. Not oh. a lot of people who will know who Dave Babbage well, is. Well, we'll just use his uh, NHL.com picture right there. Hashtag look it up. There's Dave, yeah, Dave Babbage there. That's a that's that might be the thickest mustache you could ever grow. Oh that's yeah, a push broom man. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a push broom. 
so he he's now mixing and mingling with socialites, right? B- bumping elbows with the who's who in uh, in Russia. He's Rasputin on the Ritz with them, is what you're saying. Yeah, and old Grigory. <laughs> so what now, happens next? Uh, he was so popular really at this time because he kind of came around at the right time because uh, in the early 1900s, you know, late 1800s, spiritualism was kind of gaining ground. The whole interest in the occult and the and the, the mysticism was seen as the kind of en vogue thing to do at the time. So uh, all of these kind of social circles were all fascinated by this man who seemed to be able to you know the the healing powers some people said he was able to speak for the dead uh you know these uh, types of hypnotism were kind of you know accounts of hypnotism were kind of thrown around uh and so he really made his way in to be a really fascinating and popular figure uh among the russian aristocracy now this made him all the more intriguing for the Tsarina Alexandra uh, because she was aware from an early age that her son Alexei uh, had a certain condition which is now identified as hemophilia well and the big thing with her was the fact that she was all, like even before this she was already super interested into the occult right like that was she, and she mysticism lived, yeah yeah she loved it she lived by it Right. And um, Alexei was the only son of Tsar Nicholas and the Tsarina Alexandra. Uh, and this is who runs Russia at the time. Like this is. Yeah. This is think Putin now. This is him. Like this. Well, is- Tsar Nicholas. Tsar Nicholas was the last in the line of the Romanovs, which the Romanovs had pretty much ruled Russia. Like their dynasty was like 200, 200 years old at this point. Right. Unbroken line. Uh, and so. When they had had a couple, I think they had at least three other daughters uh, beforehand. And so they were pretty at this point, you know, it was back in the time where if you couldn't have a son to secure the line, (laughs) you know, things get a little shaky at this point. Right. So when uh, when Alexi was born, it was a big deal. And so him having hemophilia uh, is, you know, that was definitely a downer. Definitely a shadow that kind of hung over Alexandra's head and, you know, she felt kind of responsible for this. And so it was always like on her or she felt kind of responsible for it to try and find some sort of solution or some sort of uh, way to kind of secure his health. Well, hemophilia is actually a hereditary disease. So essentially it actually was her fault because it was passed down by her. Right. And she was actually German. Like she wasn't actually Russian. Uh, she was uh, part of another dynasty from uh, German. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but she was she was never especially liked by the like, Russian. Not popular. She's not popular. Uh, she was now, always seen as kind of a, a an outsider. Isn't now hemophilia. That's the one that becomes permanent when there's a little too much dipping in the same pond. Catch my drift. Uh, Dipping in the family ink is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That's the one you start you start dating too many cousins. Yeah. And that's what um, can happen. Yeah, now, definitely that's, up to that's this point. Cool, I think everybody I mean my blood this, is this thin, leading, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's this is was crazy. leading up to World War One where everybody was pretty much related to everyone. Yeah. So it was like the right like the Russian Tsar Nicholas and I was it Queen Victoria were both like they were like first cousins or second cousins. Uh, you know, they were related to like the German kings, the Habsburgs, like everybody was kind of in with everybody. Everybody was cousins to everybody. All right. No, so it's it's prevalent. So he's sick. Um, you know, they have doctors helping him, but it's not working. It's he's still sick, and so she hears about this mystic man and uh, his healing powers. Right. So uh, sometime, uh, I think they believe in the spring of 1907, uh, is when Alexei had uh, a serious internal hemorrhage. And uh, the doctors were pretty much at a loss of what to do. Uh, Their treatment didn't seem to, whatever they were doing for him, their treatments didn't seem to be working. He only seemed to be getting worse. Uh, 
And so Alexandra, you know, not having anyone else to turn to, uh, had correspondence with Rasputin and asked him to pray for Alexei. And then Alexei, you know, Rasputin wrote back to her, um, uh, instructing her to, to, you know, get the doctors to leave him alone. Like, don't, don't let the doctors see him anymore. And then, uh, leave you know, him just with pray me. for him and I will pray for him. And so what ended up happening was that Alexei miraculously recovered the no. very next morning. Now, do you want to speak on to why that oh, might have been, or do you want to save? Hundred percent. Want to save that? <laughs> no, we can talk about we can talk about it on it right now. Is that one of the most common treatments back then for just anything was aspirin? Well, and Andrew, that, take that away. Why would that be an issue? So, well, like we haven't really spoke. We've talked on the fact that he had hemophilia, right? And which you know it's quite common, but you might not know hemophilia is a clotting disorder, and what aspirin or uh, acetosilic acid, which one of its main components is the fact that it's an antiplatelet, which means it inhibits the enzyme that forms clots, right? So it's why it's very popular for people who, who have had um, heart attacks, strokes, right? Because it, it's an yeah, antiplatelet. So they're pumping this poor kid full of uh, <laughs> an, an antiplatelet, an anticoagulant, and he's already got a clotting disorder. So of course it's only making it worse, right? So by the first thing that Rasputin does is, the, is say, hey, you know what? You need to get all these doctors away from him. You know what I mean? Was yeah. that just fucking, you know, right person, right time? Fluke? You know what I mean? Maybe. Or but did he, he, was, ha- he was absolutely Or he right. may have had some knowledge. Or he may have had some knowledge in... in... Well, from what I understand, a, a, a acetosilic acid has been around since the mid-1800s. And this was what, Dan? Like around early 1900s that this was happening? Yeah, 19... 19- or which one? The this specific event? Yeah, like early 1900s, 1909 or something. Yeah. So I don't really know how much that he could have possibly known about the, the the pharmacokinetics or the you know what I mean of ASA, but you know what I mean. He could very well have known. But I'm for a guy that is fluke. so who's so cunning, and we're gonna find out so manipulative and so cunning, and wield so much power. For me to like. I find it hard to believe that the his foot in the door was an absolute fucking fluke. Well, there was more to it too because from what I understand, like Dan obviously is going to know better than I do, but the, so Alexandra previously had somewhat of like I don't what do you call him a shaman or a, whatever a monk, you know what I mean? Yeah. Already kind of advising, a religious advisor, yeah, a, yeah. a religious advisor, a fucking Jafar. So she had a Jafar. Jafar. <laughs> I mean, not, like, maybe not not a fazir. Oh well, maybe I guess. So, you anyways, a uh, she had a she had a fucking Jafar, and this Jafar was making a prophecy, basically saying that like when I die, the next person to take my place will be the person that cures Alexi. And you know what I mean? He fucking died, and within that same fucking, from what I understand, I could be off, but within that day or a couple of days is when Rasputin showed up. Ra ra. And there's a there's a ton of weird things like that, and we're gonna learn more about like some of the fulfilling prophecies and um, some of that stuff. So that's why I think like I'm like, yeah, this guy, you know, we wasn't educated, but I think in some of his travels, maybe he or maybe he just had a firm belief of less is more and just the power of prayer. And but I just find it so fucking hard to believe that this guy who would we're gonna see wield so much fucking power on the world stage in just a short amount of time. The only reason he even gets through the first hurdle is that he throws a dart in the dark and hits a bullseye. Right. right place, like right time. Yeah. So Alexi so, is healed. Right. And this gives Rasputin considerable power and influence uh, at the Russian court. Uh, it, Tsar Nicholas and and Alexandra, from from most accounts, is like they were very much in love. They very much loved each other. They were very devoted to each other. And um, but one of the things was that people always felt that Tsar Nicholas could never say no to Alexandra. Um, he's always been kind of characterized as uh, a beat a bit weak wheel weak willed. Um, manipulated, you know, be a, easily manipulated. Uh, Tsar Nicholas was actually 
um, not he was not the ideal choice to become czar. Uh, from what I remember, it was either his his brother or his his uncle that were supposed to take was supposed to take the throne after his father died. But his father died. His brother died. Uh, you know, uh, within a few years of each other, and and suddenly, so then he became czar, and then he was he wasn't great at it. <laughs> um, he was never really into the kind of the whole ruling. The the Romanovs were probably they were very much the. I mean, this was the the dynasty. The Ro, you know his family was the last of the the Romanovs. They were the last of the aristocracy before the Bolshevik revolution. So they were very much the what you would picture the bourgeoisie to be. Very unaware of kind of what what was going on uh, with the common people, things like that. Um, so uh, Rasputin kind of worked his way in within there. There is some accounts that he would um, kind of provide, you know, not only spiritual advice and things like that and, and solace to, to Alexandra, but also that he was a procurer of, you know, certain medics, tonics, drugs, you know, hallucinogens, whatever. And they, they would regularly partake. And so there's some, there's some rumor that he was a, you know, he was basically their dealer. This guy sounds awesome. He was providing Nick Czar Nicholas with things like cocaine, you know, whatever opium, things like that, uh, giving them access to that and basically got him hooked on it. So there is something that maybe Czar Nicholas, you know, they wanted him around to just keep the, to keep the stuff flowing. Kept the Dude, party keep going. The good times rolling. At one point, Rasputin wields so much power in Russia that when World War I broke out in one of the battles, he told the Tsar, listen, you will lose unless you're on the front lines of the battlefield. And he's like, well, <laughs> I guess so. Guess I'm on the front lines of the battlefield. And he listens to Rasputin. Also, like this guy has ab- absolutely zero military experience. Zero. Like, Tsar Nicholas has never fucking, he's n- had no interest in fucking war or anything like that prior to this. And listens to his fucking Jafar and heads right to the fucking front lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when Tsar Nicholas leaves uh, St. Petersburg, he effectively leaves Rasputin in charge. Uh, you know, Rasputin actually ends up, you know, garnering so much power that he's able to even appoint his own ministers. Uh, to the interior and things like that. So, and of course, because he's had no political, you know, he's had no political experience whatsoever. They were all incredibly incompetent and just really made things worse uh, at a time that Russia was really hurting. He, from what I was reading, he, he actually like replaced the entire Russian uh, legislative leadership with his own people. Mm -hmm. Like cleared house and was like, all right, we're taking over. This is, this is my show now. Dude, with and I guarantee you, most of them were all sex occultists. Well, I was gonna say, it's like as soon as he walked in, he's like, "All right, you either start spinning or you fuck off." Yeah, <laughs> right. And so this led him into uh, this led him into clashing uh, with with the political aristocracy. Uh, and not only then, he was actually also seemed to be rubbing the uh, higher higher ups in the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, Rasputin was not officially part of the Russian Orthodox Church. He was not considered a monk or a priest or anything like that. Um, and so the higher ups who were, you know, the, well, I forgot what they're called, the uh, the tops of the Russian Orthodox, you know, basically the Pope of big Russian Orthodox. Orthodox. Yeah, big Orthodox. <laughs> <laughs> they were worried um, that he was going to start a new, like a new sect, like a new religion that didn't see things like there's have the same views as they believed right very much well just the fact that like he's so he's hated by the the liberal russians because he's maintaining this monarchy and then he's hated by the fucking royalists because he's replacing everybody with his own people like he's he's not getting any friends on either fucking side no unless you're and spinning because, in his orgy and he seemingly has the 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 queen Alexander, or I don't know what they call princess. What does she call Zarina? Called? Zarina under his thumb, so he's unfucking touchable. So not only is he not making friends to the left and the right, but he's not making friends to anyone because he's a fucking asshole. 
<laughs> and he's just drinking his face off, sleeping around with everyone. And if anyone, like, there is a story about him getting beat up. And he just ran to the Tsarina. He's like, they beat me up. And she's like, well, they're done then. Right. And not only beaten up. So he kind of goes along this whole thing at court with Rasputin uh, goes on for, you know, for about another six years, seven years uh, until about 1914, where he actually decided to uh, return to his hometown uh, where his wife lives. Uh, he went back to go see his family and things like that. And he was spending time there. And actually, uh, there was an assassination attempt. This was the first assassination attempt that uh, we kind of know of, uh, where he was actually assaulted by a woman who is who's named Chionya Guseva. Now, from like official records and biographies, we know that Guseva was actually hired uh, by uh, uh, by Iliador, who is a former priest who had kind of supported Rasputin uh, before, uh, you know, calling him out on his his orgies and and you know all his big dick energy uh, <laughs> back then, like there's two years more, ago. There's actually more pertinent information about this fucking assailant, though. It's the fact that she did not have a nose. This is true. What? What? She was a former she was a former prostitute uh who had been beaten and uh disfigured uh when a customer had cut her nose off. Cut so she's basically her nose off. She skeletor. Jesus. Uh, somewhat. Not inconspicuous in the slightest. No, no. And, and let me tell you something about this lady. She plays for absolute fucking keeps. She shanks she, Rasputin in the stomach and then tries to pull his fucking intestines out by hand. Yep. Whoa, what's what did, her name what did, again? She shanked him and tried to squeeze them out through yeah, the little hole. The, yeah, there is reports that when she stabbed him multiple times in the stomach and then at some point, you know, she actually reached her hand into his abdomen and pulled out some of his intestines. Gross. That's terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> that is terrifying. So he's dead. Obviously, well, this he 1900, be, he's dead. He, he should be 100% dead. should be. I'm telling you right now, as knowing someone who is a friend of a friend of mine that's a medical professional, that a fucking greasy, you know, probably syphilis hand gets reached inside your body like fucking Kali Ma and starts ripping out your intestines, you're not coming back from that. Especially in 1914. That's what I'm telling you, man. Like, what kind of fucking antibiotics are you able to take back then that's going to kill, cure you from noseless prostitute hands being ripped inside your abdomen? Vodka. Yeah, because, I mean, it was pretty much like back then it was like, well, your guts are hanging out. Well, let's just put them, put them back in there and then we'll see what happens. So, yeah. And then we'll, uh, I mean, that's what we do now. And we'll pray. <laughs> and he survives this attack assassination attempt yes well obviously he he's magic jesus man who can't be killed so they say so he says so now i'm guessing after this assassination attempt he plays it pretty low key he's probably got his he's probably a little nervous on edge right so he's playing it safe now right dan <laughs> well he ends up going back to uh saint petersburg uh, to kind of hang out and roll with the uh, the royal family again. Uh, at this point, you know, again, he's still a favorite at court. Uh, he has a lot of he has, of course, a lot of influence. the The children reportedly uh, of the Tsar and Tsarina really loved him. You know, he's kind of Uncle Rasputin hanging yeah, out because he's fucking being like, "Hey, hey, you guys want to see something fucking cool?" It shows him the scars. The fact <laughs> that he's still got intestines hanging out, like. <laughs> Um, and I believe during this time it was actually when he he had penned a letter uh, to the Tsar and Tsarina saying that this this would be somewhat uh, people could interpret as prophecy. We're saying that if if I am to de- I am to die, or he knew that he kind of had an idea that people wanted him dead. People wanted him dead, and also the fact that Russia itself was pretty much a powder keg 
I wonder what you, gave him the idea that people wanted him dead, just out of curiosity. No. I wonder, you know, probably had nothing to do with Skeletor ripping out his intestines. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it was other things. But uh, he he recognized that Russia was in the midst of some sort of great social change, which I'm sure you probably could have identified at the time due to the, you know, riots and everything kind of world war one popping off and all kinds of weird shit going on. Uh, but he said that um, he was aware that he was going to die and that his, his death would in the end save Russia perhaps, or he was saying that to the effect of what he wrote in his letter and that, uh, but if he were to be killed by someone who is related to the czar and the czarina, somebody from their family, then all of the Romanov family, the, the royal family, would be dead within two years. So that was an actual letter that he, he sent. Guy's fucking Nostradamus. Perhaps. Because when he returns to uh, St. Petersburg, he, uh, he is approached by one Felix Yusupov, uh, who's a prince, uh, and also uh, his friend uh, Dmitry Pavlovich, uh, who is a grand duke. And both of these guys, uh, along with Vladimir Purishkevich, I, mean, I probably butchered their names, but <laughs> it's Russian. No, it's perfect. I thought you did. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, they, these guys were pretty much. Um, at least Felix was. It was reported to be kind of a, a kind of a lazy about, kind of a directionalist, uh, rich aristocrat who kind of really was. Uh, from all reports, he was he was like a nobody. He was he really had no direction or anything like that. And, and it was said that this uh, he got kind of mixed up with some uh, right wing uh, movement who felt that Rasputin was a danger to Russia. Because of the influence that he wielded well, uh, and over it, the Tsarina. And it started a little bit before this of Rasputin getting fucking wasted uh, at a banquet or something with all these people present, all these important people, and basically bragging that he had the Tsarina under his thumb and he could make her dance if she wanted. And when he was confronted and they were like, hey, you know, you shouldn't be saying all this, he just whipped out his dick. <laughs> he whipped out his dick and was like, and, and like this. I read this in two different things because I was like, this is this is crazy. He whipped out his dick and was like, basically like, suck it. Like I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> How big is this guy's dick? He, 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 we keep talking about his dick. He's swinging it around. How big do they claim Rasputin's dick is? Eleven inch softy. A softy eleven inches. Like it's hanging. Inch it's, it's hanging almost to his knees. Yes. And he's a fucking, he's a grower, not a shower. Dude, that's how he'd win every argument in Russia. Whenever someone would say anything, he'd go, all right, biggest dick win argument. And he just, ha his would already be hanging out the bottom of his shorts. <laughs> you just slap that thing and on the it, table. Just yeah, in public. And then everyone's like, oh, well. Dude, if you try to, run, if you try to get that dick hard, you probably pass out from blood loss because all, it would be, you had none in your head, at, like in your upper, your actual head anymore. It'd be gall down south. You just pass out trying to get that. Well, thing dude, erect. that's you why know, Zell, he was. I haven't, I haven't put that much thought into it, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think that guy's ever getting a full a full rager. No chance. No chance of getting a full rager. <laughs> but he's he was like just swinging hammer around Russia. So it seems like, like day and night. This guy wasn't this guy wasn't sh like didn't believe in showering. Was like reported to be wearing the same underwear for six months at a time. Didn't brush his teeth. They say By all he accounts, smelled like, smelt like a goat. <laughs> yeah, smelled yeah. like a goat. But he still and he was still still slaying. Still slant because he had dick. this. He had this, and I'm not going to talk about it right now, but we'll get to it in, in a little after. But he had this aura about him, right? He had this charisma that was irresistible, right? And that women found attractive, like he could convince men, just whatever he wanted, he got. Well, it's the original uh, and that's BDE, what man. And that's what got him in trouble with all these people is this night of him being like, of just openly bragging that he could get her to do, the Tsarina to do whatever the fuck he wanted, and he was in control of her. He was also handing out cards that said free love on them. 
free love? Like, like for, yeah, from so, him? Yeah, so he's walking around helicopter in his fucking 11, 11 inch dick and handing out cards that said free love on him. It probably sounded like this when you were coming like coming around the corner. Like what is that noise? It's Rasputin. <laughs> it's huge. Uh yeah, that's all uh fairly accurate. And <laughs> so uh, Rasputin is brought um to the <laughs> the Moika Palace, which is uh, a home of Felix Yusupov and his wife, uh, on the pretense that or uh, that Felix Yusupov was actually reported to have been a pretty well-known bisexual, and that him and his wife were known to be swingers of sort, and so Yusupov told Rasputin that his wife was experiencing, uh, you know. Uh, demon possession or she needed to be uh exercised of the demons inside of her the demons demons. (laughs) he's like i'll be Uh, right over (laughs) right or she was you know we talking a cuckold situation here is this what we're talking about you telling me rasputin's gonna cuckold this this guy is that what's happening we're we're not quite sure but that's originally it's a russian term he's he's about to be cuckolded (laughs) Uh, that was the, uh, that was pr- perhaps Rasputin's understanding, uh, of the situation. Oh, oh no. Dan. Shit. Dan. Dan. Oh. Ah. No. Wait, no, he's back. <laughs> Dan? The podcast is over. <laughs> I'm back. Dan's back. Uh-uh. I'm back. What happened? Um. I hit a button. Oh, Wrong cool. button. Oh. He's back. Dan's back. <laughs> I'm back. Don't worry, everybody. All right, so he he's there. We've got a cuckold situation. <laughs> cuckold level nine situation going on here. Yeah, poor girl. Uh, Never be the same. Poor and him. so Jesus. Yusupov and his his co conspirators that kind of set up uh, a room uh, down in the basement of his uh, of his palace of his mansion <laughs> to look like as if they had a, a kind of a room of part like they had had. Uh, they made it to look like they had some sort of celebration and uh, they had informed Rasputin that, oh, you know, come on down here, sit with us, drink with us. Put uh, your keys you know. in a jar like no biggie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll measure, whip, we'll whip our dick out and have a good time and all that stuff. You but, win. Uh, you always do. <laughs> always do. Uh, so from his diary, uh, Felix Yusupov wrote that uh, the plan was to try and poison Rasputin with uh, small uh, tea cakes uh, that were laced with cyanide along with also a type of sweet wine that was served to him as well, which was also laced with cyanide. Uh, That had been the original plan. So uh, the night wears on and uh, this is December 30th. um, And so it, it, it seems to be that Rasputin is consuming these cakes. He's drinking this wine. And he should definitely be dead at this point. Oh, yeah. How fast does cyanide work, Andrew? Do you have any idea? Wicked fast. (laughs) Wicked fast. (laughs) Wicked fast. Cyanide stops, like, uh, I can't remember what it is, like a a function in your body, and then you die, like, really quick because it just pretty much turns off your body. I can't remember what that... Andrew, you know what it's called? Basically shuts off your ability to use (laughs) oxygen. You just can't. You just can't live. It just turns off your body's ability to live. Like, bye. Exactly. Like your cells off. no longer absorb oxygen. Here, let me Google it to make sure. But <laughs> that's from what I, <laughs> I remember from school. <laughs> no, that's, so that sounds is, right. Yeah. He is crushing cakes. He's crushing little cyanide muffins. You know, they've crushing got apple seeds and everything. Yeah, he's <laughs> eyeballing the wife, giving her winks, blowing her kisses. Right. Every now and well, then you hear a thud underneath the table. It starts getting a little well, the too wife's excited. Not there at this point, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, wife's not but there. everyone's looking around because he's. So what's he doing? He's eating cakes, being like, "So when's this fucking party starting?" Well, yeah, he was. I'm here for the game. They told him. Let's fucking go. They on told here. him that the wife was upstairs and that she was finishing up some party, and then you know afterwards they were gonna kind of have a little after party after she was done upstairs. Oh, okay. There it is. It so it's two thirty in the morning. Yeah. He's 
he's fucking wasted. He's stuffed full of cakes. Everyone's like, what the fuck is going on? He should be dead like this guy's five not times dying. over. He should be, yeah. We've get, he's eaten enough cyanide to kill, you know, all of us here. What the fuck is going on? So Yusupov at this at this point is uh visibly disturbed, or at least within his head, he's he's understandably uh you know perplexed as to why Rasputin is not dead on the floor at this point. So he he kind of goes upstairs. Uh he, he makes an excuse to to go uh uh upstairs and leave Rasputin there, uh, where he goes and talks to the other conspirators who are waiting up there, and they're you know, more than likely they're asking him, you know. Yo, what the fuck? Why is he not dead yet? He says, I don't know. And so either they gave him some sort of pep talk or whatever and slapped a revolver in his hand. It was like, go down there and finish the job. So uh, he gets down there and he says, oh, hey. What a badass line he says. Yep. He says, he was reported to say, better look at the crucifix and say a prayer and then shot him in the chest. It's been revoked. It's just yeah. been. Yeah, revoked. he probably said that too. Yeah, he had to have said it. Uh, so after this, uh, it's reported that the conspirators had driven, like they left him in the basement. First of all, right? They left Rasputin's body in the basement because they were going to deal with it later. Okay, I guess these guys aren't fucking criminal masterminds, and so, but. They did have the one idea to uh, drive to Rasputin's home uh, while one of the conspirators was wearing uh, Rasputin's coat and hat to make it look like uh, Rasputin had returned home. Now, genius when they idea. Came back, Middle of the fucking night in Russia, you're going to wear a guy's coat jacket going to his house. I guarantee you, they got there and they're like, there's no one fucking here to see this plan. Yeah, who like, gives what, a, what a waste of fucking time this was. <laughs> Hang so, it up in the closet. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Now they have the bright idea to like, hey, maybe we should go back and check if Rasputin's really dead. And so when they get down there, you know, um, they had a doctor with them and the doctor was going to, uh, you know, listen to for Rasputin's heart to see if he, he had, um, you know, if he actually had expired or not. Yusupov accompanied him. Yusupov uh, was standing right next to him. Surprise, motherfucker. When Boom. <laughs> yep. Rasputin leaps up from the ground and attacks Yusupov. And so they wrestled for a bit. Uh, you know, so Rasputin still got it, still kicking, still going. Uh, and what he ends up doing is he actually ends up, uh, 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 you know, fighting with Yusupov. Yusupov manages to free himself from, you know, Rasputin's grasp of death or whatever he's doing. Uh, and so he kind of takes off though. Cause he's, you know, fuck, I've got a zombie on my hands. What the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> what is I was, what I would be thinking. I don't know. I don't know if I would, if I would stay and fight a zombie or maybe he's a vampire. I don't know. I would well, you got to think point. at this point, this fucking guy's got to be buying into every single thing they've ever said about Rasputin. He's got to be like, Oh Holy yeah, fuck. he's terrified. This guy's a real fucking deal. From the dead. This guy is Jafar. I'm fucked. Yeah. So not only is he alive, it's like, oh, shit, I can't. Ki we can't kill him. We tried to poison him. I shot him. He's not dead yet. He's going to tell fucking the Tsarina and I'm going to be summarily executed more than likely. Uh, so anyways, Rasputin ends up uh, escaping from the basement out into the palace's courtyard where uh, he's uh, brought back, you know, Two other the conspirators come back and they end up just pumping him full of fucking lead. <laughs> it, it's it's reported it was one shot, maybe two, two shots. shots. Yeah, nobody's really a hundred percent sure what happened, but he is shot at least by the one uh, Purishkevich. Purishkevich. Uh, right, that's what seems to be puts him down for good. Appears to be. Uh, so they have the idea that you know it's winter time. You know, where's the best place to hide a body? In a fucking river with an inch of ice over the fucking. Well, and before it. this, it's reported that someone cut off his dick. I uh, really? I well, it's either then or 
during his autopsy. That's true. Well, that would, like, would be quite the souvenir. From what I read, it was it was it was done beforehand. Well, you put him in That's this what freezing fucking river. It's gonna preserve whatever the fuck they put in there for quite some time. Then I think it might get a little bloated. Add to the mythology a little bit. So uh, they wrapped him in a rug, up. threw him Buddy, in there. That's some wishful thinking on your part. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it'll look good when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy, have you ever seen a body that's fucking been in the water for a long time? No, I have not. That shit gets fucking swollen bloated. And bloated. Even the penis? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. <laughs> Never looked that close. And you call your your friend or a friend calls yourself a medical professional. <laughs> Tell me how um, big a fucking swollen penis. Either way, penis is. his his penis may have been cut off um, after this battle. <laughs> or cut off at autopsy. The autopsy. Well, how else are they going to prove it? Like, you know what I mean? They're like, "Okay, listen, get rid of the body, but we need proof." He's the only guy walking around with a fucking twenty-three inch dick. So they're like, "Well, we got to cut it off." It's twenty-three inches now. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it might be at this point. Uh, so he, his body is recovered later via the, the conspirators had wrapped him in a rug, uh, wrapped his body in a rug. They had shoved him through a hole in the ice in the nearby river and kind of just sent him on his way, you know, reverse Viking funeral. And, uh, and, uh, but eventually, uh, when they went to go search for his body, it was found a few days later. Like the body was found a few days later by a couple of people on one of the, the riverbanks, the city's autopsy surgeon was Dr. Dmitry Kosorotov. Kosorotov. Kosorotov? More accent, Dan. More accent. Kosorotov. There you go. Yeah. Something there like that. Go. Now, the thing is, it's interesting that Rasputin's aut- autopsy, okay, this guy who is a, you know, a very fairly famous figure uh, within, you know, Russian society at that point, his autopsy thing is gone. The re- missing. report's gone? Right. So all we have are, are some of the like anecdotal accounts uh, from ac- from the doctor himself. But the actual, you know, autopsy report is gone. Um, it, it, it was stated later that Rasputin's body uh, showed signs of definitely severe trauma because he had been shot. Uh, there was a wound to his left side. Uh, and a, a lot of other entries where perhaps he had been beaten or he, um, uh, you know, the, the bullets, at least the one bullet was recovered from his head. So he had been shot in directly in the forehead. I mean, there's actually pictures of Rasputin or what is purported to be Rasputin, uh, his body uh, with the actual bullet wound in his head that perhaps that's what killed him. Uh, there is rumor that um, he was found with his body was in such a position when they recovered it that it looked like he had actually not died from any of the physical trauma it had actually been the the cold water that had done him in right or or the drowning out of hypothermia Uh, or something well his Mm -hmm. his lungs were filled with water if i remember correctly right so which which leads you to believe the fact that he was alive when they threw him in the water and they because if he wasn't, if he was already dead when they dropped him, the lungs wouldn't have filled up, or right? Because he wouldn't be breathing or trying to breathe. But does like your throat completely like swell up so nothing gets in when you drown like that, or not drown? I mean, you don't breathe. Yeah, but I mean, you're, if you're you, dead, you still have like a throat, like a hole down there. Does nothing fill it up? No, because uh, all the air is gone. It's like there's exactly, no diaphragm the, moving. There's an, the, it's basically about the pressure, it's the right. air, yeah. right. gas exchange. Anyways, either way, too much wine to talk about that. So he he <laughs> dies, and that's the end of his story. Obviously, there was nothing further to tell. Oh, that's it. Must be it. Yeah, done. Uh, case closed. That was a good one, guys. Right on. Nah. Right. Except right. for that little prophecy. Bit of prophecy that he had <laughs> penned earlier. If I am killed everyone, by the common man, this is a great like one of those uh, old sitcoms where it's like everyone thought everything was good except for that dang stinking prophecy. Oh, that silly little prophecy. And then cue to what happens next. 
If I I'm feel like you could, you could, like, as you tell us, you should be playing the piano solo to Layla as the rest <laughs> of the fucking Romanov family just dies. Right. And that's exactly what happens because uh, Felix Yusupov was a relative of the Romanov's family and he was of their bloodline. So he was family. And so what happened was, you know, about 15 months later, approximately 15 months later, Russian revolution goes down. Oh, and uh, on that one of those fateful days, the entire Sorry. royal family <laughs> dead is executed. And the prophecy was if he is killed by a common man, you will rule Russia for centuries to come. If he's killed by one of their like Kim. their men, their yeah. stock, you and your family will be killed by the Russian people. And Q 15 months later, they're gone. They all die. They are all killed by the Bolshevik revolutionaries. While the piano solo plays. Just like good films. While the piano okay. while the piano solo plays. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Was Rasputin just a common man who was just a con man who weaseled his way in? And hey. what are you guys' thoughts about him? Listen, any man with a 13-inch dick is not a common man. All right? At least what I tell my fiance. That's not normal. <laughs> okay? <laughs> not whatsoever. That's not a common no. human being. All right, listen. Dude, no. any, any man with an 11-inch penis is an alien. Ross Putin that guy is, is a that guy's goddamn fucking alien. Packing, he's packing an iguana in his pants. All right. I got a theory. I got a theory. Listen. All right. I think due to the timing of his birth... And you know, I'm gonna make a couple stretches here. Um, timing his birth and like people talking about him being weird as a kid. I think the veil's always been thin with Rasputin. Uh, I think he had a fascination with religion because he was having these um, beings talk to him or something reaching out beyond the void and talking with him. And I don't think it was ever malicious or there was any malicious intent. However, I think at one point. Um, whether that be when he left the monkhood and was going to travel back, I think the Rasputin that left never came back from that monastery. I think what either happened was um, something happened to him in those woods where he was going to die or something, and I think he made a deal uh, with some sort of like a like a demon or spirit, um, and like a like a lust demon or a love demon that like couldn't it just made it like. It, so his whole existence after was just based upon like excess and sex and um, trying to get power anyway he didn't care and it's like you he couldn't die like the guy couldn't die the only way he was ever killed was after his dick was cut off right so which you was, mean to tell me he just lived the way that everybody really wants to live had zero inhibition and just wanted to fuck and have a good time. Yeah, but like to an extreme. But he was also co remember you got to remember he was also coercing people and so charming. Yet at the same time, absolutely repulsive. Right? He Sounds smelled like a, like a goat. goat. He wasn't showering. Listen, I fucking believe all of it because we got this fucking guy that I know that is completely repulsive and ridiculous, and yet everybody votes him as the number one theorist every time we have a fucking poll. <laughs> so it makes sense. I get it. I, I hear that, but. But no, for like for like, listen to that. I I think it's makes he was so repulsive by all accounts, but yet he was swinging dick, having all these big orgies, and I was like, but people couldn't stand to be in the same room with him because he smelled so bad and his breath was so bad, and he didn't brush his teeth or anything. Yet he could speak some words, and then people would lust over him. Right? I I think he was the embodiment of some sort of evil spirit at that point. Yeah, he's a fucking alien. Just he, FYI. Love Demon is not yet a band, band name, and it should be. It's not a band name? I'm pretty sure. I just tried to Google it, and I don't see any Love Demon band name, and it should be a band name. <laughs> Love Demon. Love Demon. Right, like oh, women it's a were, song, but not a band. Women <laughs> were lusting. Women were lusting for him, right? Like, all this stuff. I'm like, I think it makes good sense, because I'm like, that's the one thing I couldn't tie together. I'm like, this guy, by all accounts... That's your logical explanation for this whole situation is the fact that he sold his man. soul to a fucking sex demon? Check yeah, buddy. <laughs> what? And then his right after, his dick just went like this. Whoop. 
Just he was in the Siberian desert, and he didn't. You know, he Siberian it was no, no shrinkage was accounted for ever. So you're saying he Siberian had a fake cold dick. weather up there? You had a fake dick, is what you're saying? I'm just saying that was demon. You had a dick. demon dick. Demonic what you're dick. Yeah. Well, demons can just be classified as aliens, so technically Rasputin then is an alien. Sure, or alien, hey, or, some, Zell, or something. Check, right? check if Demon Dick is a band name yet. Demon Dick, <laughs> checking right now. Demon Dick. Oh, who is it? No, Demon Dice is a bad oh. name, but Demon yeah, Dick. All kinds right? of good now we are so go Dan's demon or roll. alien or some sort of entity that was just here for full, like it was using its powers or whatever to just coerce people and gain power and manipulate, right? Couldn't be killed, stabbed, entrailed, like it guts pulled out, shot, didn't die, right? Shot multiple times, poisoned with cyanide, cut off the dick, it's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, When Dan, Dan was touching on his uh, the fact that Rasputin's daughter wrote a book, and in that book, she actually states that, like on the aut autopsy report, that absolutely like none of that shit was true that he actually died from a gunshot wound to his head there was no cyanide poisoning there was no multiple gunshots there was no drowning it was just a single shot to his fucking head that killed him and that this i forget his name what's his what's that you starts with the Yusupov? y Yusupov used all that shit as an excuse as to why they killed him just to justify like this guy really was this fucking evil fucking demon and you know what i mean it took all these things to kill him here's the thing if you're making up a story, though, if you're making up a story about how you killed someone, you don't make up something so stupid like, and then we wore his coat and jacket in the middle of the night and walked back to his house to try to make it seem like if anyone was watching, they think he went home. But it was fucking two, th three in the morning. That's the dumbest detail I've ever heard, though. That's the dumbest detail I've ever heard. I'm saying that if you and I murdered Rasputin, and then we were coming up with a story that would never cross our minds because that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. That's how I know that part of the story is true. Haven't you seen the first 48? That totally throws off the timeline. They're like, no, no, I saw him walk home. It's all good. It's, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> but it's the middle of the night. It's not like there's secure CCTV cameras. Buddy, you, know, like, there's, you know there's guys around the corner spinning in circles and having orgies, all right? People <laughs> were up. People I were just, spinning. Uh, like, oh, hey, what's up, Russ Putin? Yeah, man, take it easy. I think... I think it, it it counts better for when they shoot him and they come back and they they run from him. Like when Zan says, like I don't want to fuck with a zombie. But imagine this guy is like showing them some of his like he sh he show he's been shot, he's been fucking poisoned, and he's up fighting. They're like at that point, you would be like, holy, this is a diff this isn't a human we're dealing with here. This isn't a regular man. And that's what they wanted you to believe. Alien. Right place, right time. Big dick. Big dick. He just coasted through life on that big dick energy is what you're saying. That happens to 100%. People. I think it's 100%. It's been happening all throughout time. Yeah. Dan, what do you think? I think that Rasputin is an absolutely fascinating character and that the time, the period that he lived in and that uh, the, the cultural impact that he made is not to be made light of. And there is... There is definitely like conflicting narratives when it comes to Rasputin because you do have number one, you have the aristocracy uh, who hated him. Like, you know, like you guys said, he wasn't making any friends and there is tons of, of propaganda and, and anti-royalist, uh, you know, literature and, and comics and art uh, from around that period that kind of depicted Rasputin as this evil uh, manipulative force that was, you know, the, the grand puppet master of the Romanovs and, uh, you know, bending them to his will of, of making them do whatever depraved uh, acts that were kind of, uh, you know, that were he was claimed to, to be the leader of. But no one is exactly sure about what is what is what is propaganda against him what is part of his own myth his self-aggrandizement because for many you know he seemed egotistical from from somewhat you know uh, there's 
there's perhaps you could you could make a case for people who are like Rasputin who who become these kind of icons do take on some sort of you know huge giant big dick energy ego and that kind of grows <laughs> both big dick and whatever but <laughs> um you know so so what is his what is from him and and what what is myth what is legend what is truth it's very difficult with him you know even the people who are you know talking shit about him even the the uh you know even the people who called him a charlatan even even the people in the russian orthodox church who didn't believe you know that he was actually a, a monk of any kind or that he had any type of kind of divine uh, connection still kind of said that you know he was possessed by a demon or that like Braden said that he was a perhaps he had made some sort of deal that these uh, these powers of persuasion that he had were not natural I'm just now, saying if some hobo on the street Andrew is like you know what I mean comes up to you and he smells like a goat and he's just like hey can I you like do some spinning and sinning you, you want to do some spinning and sinning there hey Hey, brother, you want to do some spinning and sinning? And he whips out an 11-inch dick. You're going to be like, oh, and you're going to run down the road. News travels fast with these guys. Like, this guy's been having these fucking rumors about him since he was a child, right? He's had all these rumors that he could speak to fucking animals and that he could heal the weak. And then he goes and performs this miraculous fucking bullshit with uh, the, the czar's son. Now, like, this is a time when they were feeding this fucking hemophilia hemophiliac or whatever the fuck you call it with, you know, acetosilic acid and bloodletting and leeches. And he tells them to kick rocks and they start feeling better. Of course, people are going to start believing that this guy's a fucking faith healer and he's powerful and has magic. Luck of the yeah. draw. Right place, right time. I, I would say... Look at pictures of Rasputin from that period. Like, well, listen, you can look at a picture of, of that 11 inch dick. They have it on display in St. Petersburg at a museum because it they got do. cut and off. The, Rus the Russian Museum of Eroticism. It is a real thing, it is a real place. Brains it's not a real that dick. Up. Dude, we didn't, it's humongous. We didn't even tell people that if you want to know what Rasputin looked like, you just look at a picture of Mr. Conspiracy because they're pretty much the same thing. Yeah, character. right now. <laughs> like, it's the same. They look exactly the same right now. Minus the eleven inch dick. Yeah, minus eleven inch yeah, dick. Yeah, Mr. Conspiracy is twelve. <laughs> <laughs> or so he'd lead you to believe. This motherfucker. Rasputin. That's Mr. Conspiracy also. I'll see if I can find 100%. a find a quick picture of Mr. Conspiracy here. Eh. Look to fucking look at his eyes though. Look at those look at eyes, those. man. Those are demon eyes. He's fucking alien, I'm telling you guys. Those are he was sent here so by pierces. the alien overlords to uh, just push Russia in the direction that they wanted. See, I, I don't think if, if, if he is an alien that came down, I think he's an offshoot alien that was like, listen, I don't want to be in my fucking alien race. I want to go live with the humans and just fucking spin and sin, baby. Sin and yeah. spin. Sin and right? spin. I want to have a good time for as long as I can. And then he just started wielding powers and stuff, and he's like, fuck it. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. The more power he got, and like power well, is super addicting right getting that power and you know absolute power corrupts all absolutely that's it yeah so he and he's just now he's just getting that and that's his new high and and that's just where it went but i i don't think he was like a i i don't think he was like an alien plant and there to do a specific job because if he was he did it terribly i think it was more likely that he was some sort of offsuit they had powers over over like you know, mild mannered men and and humans, because of like when you look at him again, he smelled like a fucking goat, and by all accounts was repulsive. Yet he was slaying everything that moved. He was fucking everything that moved in Russia. Everything. I don't know. Like Seems he wasn't. That way. Like he he was fucking everything in Russia after he rose to all this fucking you know fame and shit like that. Like back when he was in Siberia. He was fucking prostitutes and randos. Like he wasn't slinging dick around Russia until he made a name for himself. And but he was still a know, crusty look fuck, hobo. Look at, at the fucking time. Mick Jagger. Look at Mick <laughs> Jagger. That is a fucking weird looking dude, and he's swinging motherfucking dick, and he ain't healing anybody. Do you think he smells like a goat? 
Could very well. He Good. does look. Like I'm he saying. Like a goat. I'm saying this. You know I, what? You, I will say this. In the 1800s, if I you, think everybody smelled like goats. Okay, okay. Would you rather Mick Jagger or, or Putin or uh, Rasputin? Well, probably Mick Jagger because he probably has a way smaller penis and it would hurt <laughs> way less. See, you wouldn't walk ever. <laughs> even in a wheelchair after that shit. <laughs> It'd be fucking horrible. <laughs> Mick That's Jagger, not where I 100%. thought that was going, but v- excellent point. Touche. That's exactly <laughs> it. If I got to go with, you know, Mick Jagger's probably getting an average penis, and then I don't like Rasputin. <laughs> Rasputin's taking your guts out, stabbing you. Listen, I already have <laughs> issues with vertigo. I can't spin around in circles. My, let alone get fucking smashed right. by 11 inch dick. No, thank you. Just after that, I found a picture of Mr. the most recent picture of Mr. Conspiracy from our uh, failed case file with him the other week. Rasputin. Oh yeah, there's Rasputin. Fucking right Rasputin the right thing. there, man. Same person. Fucking Rasputin. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's wrap this one up. Any final thoughts on Rasputin? No, he's an alien. All right. Let's uh, fire this new movie coming out about him with Leonardo DiCaprio. I think next year or the year after. Fitting. St- who is Leo Rasputin? Yeah, he has Rasputin. Awesome. Oh. Yep. Okay, well, I changed Alan, my mind. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman played him in a uh, TV miniseries and won a Golden Globe or an Emmy for it. I changed Did he my have mind. Have a prosthetic? Maybe. <laughs> Do you mean like at the no, end Alan of Alan Rickman Nights? has a 13 inch dick, so I mean. At the end of Boogie He's, Nights, when that's you his get wand. To see it? That's his magic wand. Yeah. No, wait, okay, listen. If Leo, if it's Leo, then I'm going fucking Rasputin for sure over McJagger. 100%. Oh, oh, like you're saying, yeah, but you. If it's that's Leo. Not the that's not the Leo, Leo DiCaprio as Rasputin. Leo gets it all. I'm fine. All right, that. all right. Let's uh, all right. let's fire up the randomatron. Yeah, let's put it on a fan sto- fan submission. Dialing it in. Here we go. Printing, faxing, scanning, emailing, texting, all at the same time. You're going to get it here Woof. in a quick sec. There you go. All right. This is called The Haunting of Westridge. Um, again, I don't know how many times I've said this. Too many. But if you write into the show. Say it every time. Within the opening line of your story, say, use my name, don't use my name. If you don't say anything, I, I'm not going to use your name. And I'm going to make up a shitty name that sounds very similar to your real name. <laughs> and that's your own problem. Um, right. So I've only told this story of the haunted house to my close friends. It's something that still just freaks me out to even think about. I lived in this house for three years and it was hands down the worst three years of my life. Let it be known that my family up till now didn't believe in ghosts. My aunt and I were hugely into them and have played Ouija boards. I've seen shit my whole life. I've heard shit my whole life. But my parents are like, hey, it's all in your head. So fuck it. Who am I to argue? The only one who ever believed me is my aunt. The summer before my 10th grade year, we had to move. My parents rented a house. The person who owned it decided to stop paying the mortgage on it, so we had to get out fast. My parents looked for a few places, but most were too small. At this point, we had my mom, dad, brother, me, my aunt, uncle, and their four children. That's 10 people, about eight too many for me. So I go with them one day and they see it for rent sign. We pull up to this older farmhouse, and like I said, I've seen stuff, heard stuff, and just kind of have the sixth sense about me, I guess. So I'm like, nope, I'm not going in there. And my mom's like, come on, it's fine. I was like, hard pass. The very aura of this house was just off. Like, have you ever been somewhere, and you have the feeling in the back of your mind, like, this place is just bad juju? Well, this was the place for me. Well, this was that place for me. This, that was this place for me. That's what I was trying to say. My parents chalk it up to me being a teenager and not wanting to move. About 30 minutes later, they come out and say, yep, this is the place. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. The one place I'm like, hey, let's not live here. Fast forward, we moved in. The place is average size. It has a sunroom, kitchen, dining room, living room, 
one, the first floor, then you go up the flight of stairs, about 24 of them, and you have a small hallway and four doors, three are bedrooms and one's a bathroom. Naturally, my brother is older and gets the bigger room, which we will discover has a big door in it that leads to the attic. Fuck that. I'll say that right now. I'm not sleeping in a room with a fucking doorway right to the attic. That's this me, my words, not hers. Fuck that. Um, it's your standard attic, dusty, pretty big, not finished. So naturally, we use it as storage. Oh, and there's a basement. The creepiest basement I've ever been in in my whole life. Not finished, all concrete. It's like underground, obviously. I think most basements are. But there are two doorways in it. One has wood sealing it off. You could see through parts of the wood, and there's concrete stairs that probably go straight to the, straight to the pit, to, pit of hell. <laughs> Unsure... And the other door just leads to nothing. It's like a small cubby space that goes a foot and a half in. It's all concrete. The rest of the basement is dimly lit and covered in spider webs. Night one. The place has no central air, so we need to put units in all the windows. It's hotter than hell outside. It's like late June, almost July at this point. So we throw in an AC unit in the living room, and me and my cousins are going to sleep there. We had been moving all day, so it didn't take long for all of us to fall asleep. Well, I wake up around 3 a.m. The TV's on. There's a light on in the kitchen. The one that hangs over the stove, and I'm like, cool, we're fine. My cousins are all scattered across the ground, and I'm on the couch. I'm pretty much just waiting to fall back asleep, but for some reason, my eyes keep drifting to the kitchen. I feel really uneasy, but I try to brush it off. Up until our pantry closet door opened so slowly. At this point, I'm frozen. I feel that icy cold fear rushing all over me. So I wake up one of my cousins. I'm like, hey, is that door open? She's like, um, yep. I said, well, it just opened by itself. I watched it with my own two eyes. She's still waking up. So she's kind of like, what? And then it starts closing slowly to which we're both now like, holy fuck. And I said, okay, on the count of three, we run for, we run for the room one two and i ran because if a demon spawn from hell is going to get someone it ain't going to be me i left her and i'm not sorry (laughs) we we make it up to my room and it's hot even for it being nighttime at this point i open all the windows and i say we've got two options go back down there and try to sleep which for me is a big old nope or we stay up here block the door and hopefully don't die from heat stroke we picked heat stroke the next day my other cousin comes up to me and is like why did you guys sleep upstairs so i tell her She got very offended that I would leave her down there with a demon, but we all laughed it up. I pretty much stopped typing here, and if you're interested in the rest, just let me know. Uh, Throughout the three years, things got worse. It started with the door. Then there was whispers, feeling like you're being watched, seeing full body apparitions, recording and hearing little girl, girls. I would see them all the time. Things would fly off the counter. And then there was this day I went to the basement. And to this day, I can't even comprehend what actually happened. The house was for sure haunted, but I can't help but wonder if it was as cheesy as this sound. And I do hate saying it, a portal for demons. Um, I also have a story about a abandoned house that me and my mom went to where I feel so creeped out. Um, anyways, I'd love to dive deeper into my story if you're interested. But obviously typing it would take hours and I don't want to like type it out if you are not interested. Thanks. We are interested. Type out more of that story. It's fascinating. All of it. Uh, We want to hear more about your portal to hell. Um, Thanks for writing that in. Uh, We'll call you Gritney. Gritney. Thanks for that, Gritney. Portal to hell. Portal to hell. We want to hear more. Send send us more. Dude, that's exactly what we want to hear. More yeah, important to exactly, Why you? Yeah, if you tease us with a little bit, I want to hear. I want to hear all this stuff. I want fire, brimstone, portal to hell. Zool, let's go. It's definitely Zool. Zool hangs 100%. out in kitchens. We already know this. Yeah. <laughs> um. What else we got? We got a theory of the week. Theory of the week is Sydney Kapla. She Woo! made us all giggle with the uh, uh, posting on our Facebook group page of North Korea right now, and it's a picture of Kim Jong Un on Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Pretty funny. hilarious. Made me laugh. Yeah, it's pop, uh, him around. Yeah, it's a good one. It's We're one not of the sure ones if where he's someone good. mentioned we all saw it. We all had a good giggle. Good shit. Yeah. Well deserved. So Thanks for the laugh in these trying times. 
for sure. If you're uh, if you're looking for our Facebook group, you can find it on Facebook. Just search Alien Theorist Theorizing. It should pop up. I think it's called Official Fan Page. It'll pop up. If not, just message us and we will direct you how to get on there. And if you want the best after hours bonus features we could offer, head to our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Alien Theorists. Uh, is it Alien Theorists Theorizing? I think Alien Theorist Podcast. Alien Theorist Podcast. Or just find the link in the show notes or website aliantheorist.com. Nope. Easy. And support the show. And we have tons of bonus episodes, tons of bonus material. A little bit of a humble brag, but I think we probably do Patreon the best. Well, I don't know about the best, but we're, you know what? (laughs) We do Patreon the best. We Patreon the best. No, we do. You know what? That's not. That's a little bit of humble, humble brag because we do actually put a lot of stuff out there, as much as we can, and more yeah. all the time. So, having said that, to our newest Patreon supporters, we salute yeah, you. Yeah, so make up some names. Here we go, making them up. Jose A. Martinez. That's pretty. Good Ryan one. Smars. Fake. Fake. fake Got a fake from Dan. Justin Swingler. Super fake. That's 100% fake. Hugo. 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 Just Hugo. Yeah, all right. All right. Ultra I'll give Hugo one. Now you know you're putting an effort in. And very fitting for this one, just Russian. Hmm. Rasputin. Bots. Could be Rasputin. Rasputin's on our Patreon page. Could be Rasputin himself. We're probably, to be honest, with all the misinformation out of Russia, I wouldn't be surprised if they fund us a little too. Hey, mm. I'll take a little Russian funding. Bring it in. Come on. Hey Putin wants to hey Putin wants to put rubles on the table. I'll take them. Yeah, fuck. We need we need all the rubles we can rubles get. We'll spend the same. <laughs> that's it. That's it for this week. Woo! Um band of the week? No band of the week week this week. We have some in the works. If you want your band featured on the show, email us at aliantheorists at gmail.com with your Spotify links or streaming links and express permission to use your your song on the podcast because it will go on YouTube and we will get flagged and it will suck. So as long as you have express permission, it's no problem. And I think that is it for this week. Beautiful. Um, thanks for the support guys. Um, we've got tons of shows coming up. We haven't slowed down because of all this COVID-19 stuff. So we're going to keep pods coming to you. Uh, stay safe out there, everyone. And as we always say at the end of these things, keep those eyes on the skies. Peace. Woo!